Well, today on Nation, we're talking about the top five mistakes that you can make as a window cleaner if you're getting into business. If you've been in business, it doesn't matter. We're talking about them today, so please stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from WCRWindowCleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Thanks for hanging out with us. Really, 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 really appreciate it. And if you're new, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully it doesn't suck and you want to go and binge everything. And if you are binging, tell me about it because I always like to hear. I got uh, one guy I think did uh, like uh, six straight hours, I think. Anyway, pretty awesome. Um, if you are one of the cool kids, if you're somebody who is part of the nation, and I hope you are, you watch every video, you give us a thumbs up on YouTube, you comment, you've of course given us a review there on iTunes, and most importantly, you buy your supplies through me for your window cleaning and brush washing, then thank you so very, very much. The last one that uh, somebody said to me was I could buy name brand brandy. So boom, if you don't know anything about Wisconsin, it is a brandy state, so... Thank you guys very, very much. If you do want to buy your supplies from me, that would be absolutely utmost epic. Uh, my number direct, my cell is 862-312-2026. Save that number. I'm going to give it to you again right now. Grab a piece of paper. Got it? Okay. It's 862-312-2026. That's my cell. Call me, text me, whatever. Put everything in your cart. Shoot me a text and be like, yo, Jersey, what's up? Everything's in my cart. And at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off. And you just tell me that code. I'll verify your address. And that's it. Doesn't cost you any extra. And uh, it's just as simple as doing it online. But I get credit. Mm -mm -mm. And I can buy my name brand brandy or band-aids or pasta or anything else you guys have been telling me I can buy. Which is stinking, stinking awesome. So uh, thank you very, very much. If you just want to text me and be like, yo, your show sucks. Or, uh, yo, I like your show then do that. That's my number, 862-312-2026. And here I'm going to ask you one big favor. For everybody's listening, uh, a lot of you have, some of you have, not a lot I should say actually, but go to iTunes and give us a review. Review the show. Share this show. I've been doing now for over two years, and it would be absolutely amazing if you were part of the nation, you're the people out there fighting the good fight, and you are sharing my show, or you are... Uh, uh, giving me reviews. It's just awesome. Just go do that. If you got second, that would be absolutely epic because I want to get as many people as possible to watch this. Um, that is my goal. But a couple of quick shout outs for today. Mike the Glass Guy, what's going on? Man, he's the cool. I almost hate how cool he is. He's like skateboards and like he's just cool. His videos are epic. His computer is at. He's just cooler than me. But anyway, Mike the Glass Guy, what's going on, man? Uh, Ryan Fuster. That's for you. If you can't see, you're not on YouTube. I just gave you a thumbs up. Uh, Brandon Evans, what's going on? And Carlos Saldua, what's up, man? It's good to see you back. Uh, commenting. Thank you guys for commenting, by the way. I love reading the comments on YouTube. That's where the conversation is. Just put a comment there. If you watch, we have hundreds of views every week uh, just on that side alone. And we only get a couple comments. So comments. Make my day, would you? No, I do appreciate that, though. Uh, but today we're talking about the top five window cleaning mistakes. It's actually the five and a half mistakes that we're talking about today. Why do we do that? Five and a half? Because the last one's like, you know, it's a, it's a half. It's, it's a half a mistake. Um, but it is a mistake nonetheless. And if you guys have been in business for a long time, maybe you're doing some of these. If you're new to business, heed my warning. I'm just a dude... With the microphone, he's playing a dude, right? But I am uh, telling you kind of some of my information. I may be wrong. Tell me if I am wrong. But uh, here's kind of some of my ideas. Now, everybody is in a different place in their uh, business, their career, their, their, their livelihood, right? So some of these are kind of um, newer in that. But some of them you maybe have done forever and you didn't even know that some guy on the internet thinks they're mistakes because that's really what these are. But that's what I'm willing to kind of get in and talk about. So let's just get right into it at number five. 
of the five and a half. Um, it is uh, not embracing technology. And I just got back from the huge convention. I was going to guess not just back. A couple weeks ago. And there were so many technology companies. There's software and programs and CRMs and, and all that stuff. And there's still a lot of you going, ah, I don't like that. I, I want to go ahead and uh, just use my, uh, my index cards. If you fight that you're a dinosaur, I'm sorry. You've done it that way forever. Send me your hate mail. That's fine. If you're not into the new stuff, at least knowing what's out there, you're a dinosaur. Think about any other company that is huge. And not that you need to be huge. That's not where you're going. But think of any company. Think of Coca-Cola. Do you think that Coca-Cola does not have the absolute most state-of-the-art stuff? Do you think they're still doing anything on business or on uh, uh, index cards? No. No, they're not. Why? Because they embrace technology. And technology will make things run smoother, easier, faster. They'll make all of that go and if you're on board with it, you can implement it in your business. Your business is that much better. Your business will be that much better because of it. One of the other things that I, I, I want to touch on there in the new stuff, and again, I'm a sales guy, so take it with a grain of salt, but I've been in pure water for 10 years. I know how awesome it is. There's something that's absolutely, genuinely awesome was when somebody's like, man, I'm so glad I got into pure water. I was such a hater, and now I love it. Like, the people, you people out there who are you people, who are you, you people, water fed haters. But if you guys are out there, you hate water fed, it's taking your jobs, yeah. you know, that's cool. Listen, it's a tool. Like if you've never used the Unger Ninja, sweet. I'm not going to go on there and be like, you're an idiot for using it. All right, you're not. I'm a real window cleaner. I don't use, so don't, don't go, don't waste yours and my time because I have to moderate all the groups about your hate, but that's another technology, man. Embrace it. Try it. Give it a fair shot. I'm telling you, it's amazing. It's not a fad. It's not a taking your jobs. It's it's just working smarter, faster, easier. So do that. Th that's the same thing with software. By the way, one of my favorite softwares is Responsibid, and I'm going to try to remember because I always, 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 always forget. I'm gonna post a link down below uh, for a couple softwares. Uh, discounts on different softwares. But the first one is responsive, but absolutely epic. You put it on your website. Uh, it helps people bid. It helps people schedule. It helps no matter what time of day the tire kickers are getting filtered through. It collects all the information. It does the follow-up. It's absolutely an epic program. It's epic. It's sold probably, I would say, since I've been using it, probably $100,000 worth of work, if not more. Like That's an easy figure for that because there's so many times that that program sells work i'll be sleeping i'll wake up like oh you got two new bids and two new accept like it's crazy look it up it's responsive bid kurt kempton one of the most awesomest guys ever uh does that uh if i remember i'll post a link and then uh the other one that is game changing is send gym send gym is just a program that allows you to basically send postcards brownies like thank you cards follow like everything and that's paired with like Radius Bomb where you can go and pick a house. Man, I really like that neighborhood. Boom, send them all postcards. You could send a postcard of an individual person's house. Send it in. Be like, ah, you want your windows clean here? Like it is absolutely, the technology is just there. If you're not using this stuff, by the way, like I said three times already, I'm going to remember to post the link. I promise. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be down below. I'm going to post it, I swear. But... Those are just a couple examples of softwares that will just make your business that much better. Just embrace it. Now, somebody had asked they wanted to le learn more on CRMs. We will do an episode on CRMs, I promise, but uh, this is not that. I just want you to kind of embrace the new technology. So go out there, see what's out there, and, and embrace it. But the number four mistake that you can do in window cleaning of the five and a half mistakes is uh, doing too many services. Now, People are always kind of, well, I'm getting into pressure washing, I'm a window cleaner, I'm getting into pressure washing. Or, I'm a pressure washer, I'm getting into window cleaning. Awesome. That is awesome. Those are not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is when you are a jack of all trades and a master of none. Now, there's a few services. There's window cleaning, pressure washing, which is house washing, that type of thing, uh, concrete, that type of thing, uh, roof cleaning, gutter cleaning. Those are like the core 
um, services. They all pair to each other. And any company can do all four of those. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, we, there's gutter vacs. You don't even have to get up to do a gutter. There's water fed. You don't even have to do a ladder for that. You know, roof cleaning. I uh, like to be on a ladder. Uh, I don't go on the roof, but I'll spray. For, but those are the type of services that you can add. Now, that's an exterior service. When you're said and done, I can have your entire property cleaned on the outside. I could do your driveway, your house, your roof, the windows, clean out the gutter. I could do everything. That's where the core is. But now, say you also offer painting and dog poop removal and pet sitting and, you know, uh, uh, tire rotation. Whatever you're doing, if you're too far away from the, the, the core, you're going to lose the possibility to upsell. Now, you're going to have to sell a dedicated service by itself and you do too many things, people just realize you're not good at any of them because you just don't do a couple services that you focus on, you do everything. And I'm sorry in advance if you do that, but that's one of those things. You can't always look. If you think that there's more money in one than the other, focus on that one. You gotta find where the money is and do that. But you can't have all those services, you just can't. And a lot of people, especially in the beginning, they do everything. Everything anybody asks them, hey, you mind cleaning out my shed? Yeah, well, yeah, we could do that. Because they want the money, they need the money. I get that. Making money is better than not making money. I understand that. But as a core, it's very, very important that you stay very close. We did fleet cleaning for a long, long time. And then one day I realized fleet cleaning is not in our wheelhouse. It's just not in our core. Fleet cleaning is semis and trailers and they're called tractors and trailers and, and you know, uh, all those different things. And uh, I just dropped everything, everything. And it was, I mean, it was almost a six figures worth of stuff that I got rid of. Um, it's just one of those things that uh, it just wasn't the core. I want a strong company, right? So take it into your thing, but don't do everything. It just doesn't make any sense. I know money's awesome, but just just don't do not do everything. It's If you get lost along the way, you're not going to be able to focus on everything. That's why there's a difference between a floodlight and a laser, right? If you could just flow, if I am the absolute best outside window cleaner, that's all I do. Well, you're probably going to be the best at it because you do it all the time. That's all you do. That's like a heart surgeon. You know what they do? Only heart surgeries. They don't also do like, you know, brain surgery and, and plastic surgery. And they don't do that because then you're never good at any of it, right? Same kind of thing. Don't be a jack of all trades and a master of none. Stick to your core, I'm telling you. Uh, the number three thing, uh, mistake, out of the top five and a half mistakes in window cleaning, is that you're not branding yourself. Now, a lot of us, not all of us, because there's some absolutely epic stuff out there. Go look at uh, Wesley Bloom's stuff. I don't even know that he watches the show. Good dude. Look at his stuff. Everything is branded. Down to his buckets have stickers, right? Branding is something that makes you look professional, even if no one remembers your brand. Even if you fall into the obscurity of another product that they remember to call you later. But here's what happens. You are setting yourself aside from the other people. If you go even show up for a bid or you show up for the job or you are doing work and somebody sees you doing work and wants to stop, you have your amazing shirt. If you're wearing a hat or a coat, that's logoed. Your equipment is all colored the same or logoed the same. Your trucks look amazing and they don't look like dumpsters. They're completely wrapped, right? There's a lot of people out there who get a magnet sign and again, I'm not cutting on you, no matter where you are in this position. Obviously, a lot of us don't have $10,000 to just put into branding. But there's a lot of guys who get into that whole, I have a magnet on my truck, right? Or I have a vinyl decal on a window. There's a lot of that. And they wear nothing. I saw something yesterday of a window cleaner is taking pictures. He's wearing sand, like flip-flops. Flip-flops. That's mind-blowing. I'm not, I don't want you in my house. I don't care if you live in an island. Like, that that sucks. I don't, I don't want you in my house. I don't want your, 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 you know, it just doesn't look professional. It doesn't seem like something that I would want. Now, branding itself does a couple things. First off, it makes you look absolutely professional. 
It sells yourself before people even talk to you, right? If they see all that's in front of there, there's a truck and the guys are wearing their uniforms and they're doing their things, neighbors will stop and say, hey, can I have a card, right? If you just look like a guy who's got a dented up paint covered truck and you're, you know, uh, you know, wiping your nose and you're trying to do stuff, people are like, oh gosh, well, they save some money, right? A lot of times you're not getting referrals. You're not selling before you even get sold. You're not doing that. So branding is very important. Another thing that branding does that you don't even realize is if your name is pain in the glass, which is very, very common. A lot of you are. If your name is pain in the glass, if your name is anything that's clever or your logo is clever, clever. Josh Latimer's old business was Birds Beware. Birds be yeah, Birds Beware. The logo was epic. The name is epic. That's stuff that even if you don't remember on a Tuesday in the middle of summer, when you go to search window cleaning and you see it, it triggers it. Instantly, it's it's deep in your brain. You remember it because the branding did that. It's not Coca-Cola. It's not like McDonald's. Every single person knows McDonald's. Like Everybody in my town knows who I am. No, they don't. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. They care when they actually need their windows, right? But when you are branded so stinking hard like that, then people will remember you, and if they see your name, they will hire you back. They will remember that they had you. All of that comes back in the flash because the branding did that. Branding is super, super important. I don't care who you are or what you want to argue. You can't argue the fact that branding is there. Look at the biggest companies. Again, look at the most well-known companies. Again, you should have everything you could possibly have with your logo, your color scheme. That is absolutely a sure, sure thing. It makes you look better. It sells the jobs. It just is such a big thing. A lot of guys who aren't branding think, oh, it's not worth it. Nah, I got, I just, I get, you know, I just wear, you know, I wear a nice shirt. It just doesn't have my logo on it. Okay, then buy a nice shirt with a logo on it. Or buy a nice shirt and get it embroidered. Or do something. Your appearance is so valuable. Look at our industry. Sometimes you go to these events, and not this last event. I'm not talking about anybody specific. I didn't even get to leave the dang hotel, but for like dinners, you know. But, uh. There's a lot of guys who show up and you see the truck and you're like, whoa, whoa, this dude does not use QuickBooks. Like his entire year of receipts is on his dashboard, right? Like there's cups and like ripped seats and like just, they just, ah. And then that guy is going, well, I saved so much money because I, you know, uh, this truck just run. Okay, I sort of kind of get that theory maybe, but how much money did you lose? How much money did you lose? I guarantee you. If your truck saved you $10,000, but it looks like a dumpster and there's no logos or letters, I guarantee it's cost you more than $10,000. Because just having a wrapped truck, Bobby Walker, you guys know Bobby Walker, he just wrapped all this stuff. That truck can sit anywhere in a parking lot. People will see it. If they need somebody, they'll write it down. Or if anything, it will lock into their brain in the branding side of it and they will recognize it when they go to actually look for a window cleaner. That stuff is just unmatched. It's unmatched by just some random beat up truck that you got for $1,500 that you're trying to drive into the ground, right? Yes, I could be wrong. Yes, I'm just some doofus with a mic. I'm sorry, don't mean to upset you if that's how you roll, but think about it. That's all this stuff is supposed to do. It's just get you to think. Get you to think about if it's a mistake for you. Now, I'm just saying it's a mistake for me. We changed everything and branding is on everything. Letterhead, envelopes, everything has our logo, color schemes, everything. And it looks absolutely amazing. It costs a couple bucks extra, but you look absolutely mind-blowingly legit. In your bids, when you do bids, everybody sees everything that they have is in a color scheme form. Man, I'm telling you. I've closed more things just because of our appearance than I have price ever, ever. So something to think about. Anyway, that was the number three uh, mistake you can make here in window cleaning. And the number two mistake, in my measly opinion, is that advertising when you're slow is wrong. Now, everybody knew, ah, no, I would drum up business. Man, it's slow, man. I got uh, all these postcards. You know why it's slow? It's because as a collective, and you know this, I'm going to prove this to you right now. As a collective, when the phone starts ringing in spring, You'll go one day, you'll have yeah, two, three, four calls. The next day, you'll have 50 calls. Those 50 people did not talk to each other. The light switch happens because something triggers it in people's minds that it's time 
to order. It's time to get. It's time to go. When you have a slow spring, think about that. That's not just one person not booking. That's everybody not booking. Something is going on with the weather, with the mindset, with the economy, with the whatever that gets people to do it or not do it. And you advertising may drum up a few, but you're not going to get an ROI on that. You're just not because it's not in people's brains. What you do need to do is advertise when it is hot. Man, I I can't believe how busy. You guys right now are saying, I can't believe how busy it is right now. This time of season is August. And you're saying it's amazingly busy. Guess what? Money, put it all back into advertising right now. Because guess what's coming around the corner? Fall. Book everything now. Fill up your fall. Fill it up. That is where advertising when you're slow, you advertise when you're busy and fill when you're slow. If you offer stuff to somebody and they go, ooh, uh, your price is a little bit high, I'm going to check with them. Well, if you want, uh, we can actually fill you in our slow time, which usually is July or, say, December. We can actually do your window cleaning in December. It'll save you an extra $50 on it because it's a little bit slower time for us and easier for us to schedule. They go, wow, I can wait till December. Okay, great. Well, how about December 3rd at 9 a.m.? How does that work for you? Great, let's book it, right? Filling up the slow time but advertising when it's busy That is a game changer. Your ROIs, right? Return on investment. Your ROI, meaning how much money you get for how much money you put in, will blow you away when you do that when it's busy. That is the biggest and most important part. The guys who are out there who try to drum up business, they take all their money, which is in, uh, you know, they're already a little on the low end, because it is winter or it is the slow time, uh, maybe they didn't quite get everything set up and now they're trying to put it all into marketing, they're going to be sad because now that $3,000 they spent in marketing could have been a mortgage. But you spent it on marketing and got like three people. That is a loss. That's not. If I go to an ATM, that's what business is. I want to make something. I want to make a money machine. I want to make something that when I put in a dollar, I get $10 back. Now, if you can do that, if you can do that, dollar in, 10 back, you could put a million dollars in, you get 10 million back. The point of advertising is to make something, push it when it's hot, strike when the iron's hot, all that, but you need to do that when people are actually wanting to buy it. You can't sell a cheeseburger to somebody at six in the morning who just ate breakfast. Like, if somebody's not hungry, they're not buying a cheeseburger, right? That's why you see a lot of food ads around dinner time or an hour before dinner time because what's happening is they're trying to get it in your brain so that you get your mindset so that when dinner time comes because you're starting to be hungry already, then you go get it. Why do you think on an interstate, the most popular billboard, the best ROI billboard there is is a big cheeseburger half hanging off the thing with the McDonald's arches on it? No words. Come try our new cheeseburger. It now has twice as much ketchup. That None of that's on there. It didn't sell you on that. All it did is it knew. When you're hungry, you need to be reminded that you're hungry. That's what advertising is. When you are in the mode of window cleaning, it's the perfect time of year. Now I get all of a sudden a window cleaning thing. I go, oh, man, yeah, I want window cleaning. Even if you weren't out searching for a window cleaner, if you do that when it's striking when the iron's hot, you're gonna, ROI is going to blow away. Blow it away. Blow it away. Just don't advertise when it's slow. You're wasting your money. I'm telling you, I'm sorry that it's slow. Uh, Yes, there's a lot of free ways to advertise. You can call and do all that. Don't spend money when it's slow. That's not how advertising works. I'm telling you. Again, these are the top five and a half (laughs) that uh, I came up with. So I may be wrong. Maybe you're like, I like to advertise when it's slow. Uh, uh, I'm always appreciative for my point zero zero one. ROI, I think that's worth it. Maybe, maybe. But here's the other thing. I'm not ever going to spend $3,000 to make $3,000 because now i got to do the work. I'd rather have $3,000 sitting in my account and not have to work for $3,000 because I already got it, right? Think about it. Anyway, the number one on the list of the five and a half, we'll do the half after, but the number one is not having savings. Now, this kind of pairs with the last one, right? And it's kind of a sucky thing for somebody who does sales, like myself, 
That's how I feed my family is doing sales and selling stuff to people when they need it. But telling you not having savings means sometimes you don't spend. But here's kind of the, the catch on this is when you don't save, you don't plan how much you need, we've all done that. We've all been there. Again, Josh Latimer had a car repossessed. Like a lot of us in business, that's why we now have healthy savings accounts. It's because we've learned that. But a lot of guys go in and they don't, they underestimate what they need per month. Now you can know your bills. Take a month. Look at what your expenses are. Take a look at your living needs. Take a look at all that and make sure it's saved. Now, if you have employees, remember you need to make payroll. Yes, if they're doing work, they're bringing you in more money. You can't count on that. You need to be able to make the payroll. So you have to save for that. You have to save for the cushion. Save for your costs and figure an extra month. If you say, hey, our busiest month of the year is April. Well, guess what? You're going to plan for April to suck. Because there's another thing is that you get to April, all of a sudden it's the longest, wettest season in history and nobody's calling you till May or later. Well, now you're out of money. Now you're out of money. That sucks. But here's the thing. If you figure out how much money you need to get through the winter, planning that nothing happens, because if there is stuff that happens, guess what? It's just icing on top, right? But if you plan for winter... Or the slow time, I don't care if that's winter or summer. Just plan as it's going to be the worst ever. It's hard to do, I know. And it's very hard to do when you got nothing but money in spring, right? Middle of fall, you're like, ah, buy the motorcycle. Don't do not do that. Don't go do that. Save money. And figure on all that. Keep it in there and you'll have it. And guess what? When you come out of that spring or into, say you're going through winter, you come into spring. Spring starts early. Everything's crack lacking. It's here, baby, and you got a surplus of that money. Throw it into advertising. Now you advertise. You got the money still through winter because it made it through. You planned an extra month. You have that extra money. Now it's hot. Things are crack-a-lacking. You're advertising like crazy. You're going to be so much faster. So much faster. It's like slingshotting you, right? You ever watch NASCAR? I don't. Stupid analogy. I don't even know what I'm talking about. But when they're drafting, when they pick up the other side, they get around them, it actually throws them ahead. That's what this plan is going to do for you. Save your money through the winter so that you have it in winter and spring to use as advertising. There's nothing worse than everything going crazy and you're like, but I need people to pay me. It's so crazy. I want to advertise, but I got no cheddar, man. It sucks. So do that. But still, understand what you do. If you know what you have to save, you know what you can spend. Before the end of the year is the best time. We have some of the biggest purchases made because people are like, hey, it's tax time. I got this cheddar. It got to get used. I know I need the deductions. Let's do it. So if you know what you need to save, then you know what you can spend before. Very, very smart. And I'm telling you, you will thank me later. That is the number one way out of the top five and a half. Well, where's the half? The half is having cheap gear now i put it as half because i don't want to put it oh yeah you're a sales guy that's what you do yeah okay cool i get it i get it and yes that's how i make my cheddar and all you people who buy through me are absolutely amazing and i love you but when you have cheap gear you went out in the very beginning you got the home depot stuff it sucks didn't work right you took a lot more time to do everything because you didn't have the right stuff maybe you're still using microfiber towels to detail Buy a huck towel. I'm telling you, if you don't know about hucks, just get a get a danged huck towel, recycled surgical towel, and change your life. But get good gear. If you don't have good gear, everything else is harder, it's slower, you dislike life that much more. Update your gear. Buy the stuff. Doesn't mean you need a silencer. Those things are 200 bucks for a bucket on a belt. They're absolutely cool as all get out. But... You don't need to do that. What I'm talking about is just getting new, better gear. Like, say your channels, your handles. Oh, man, those handles are broken. I got them duct taped. Buy a couple new handles. Having crappy gear just puts you in the mindset that you're a crap business. If you think that you have crappy gear and a dumpster truck and you wear slippers or sandals or whatever to work, 
and you think that that doesn't have a change in your mindset, if you think that your employees who are using broken, crappy gear, if that doesn't have a, 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 a change in their mindset of what kind of company that they work for or what kind of image they need, you're absolutely wrong. In my honest opinion, you're absolutely wrong. So go out there, take it with a grain of salt because I am a salesman, but update your dang equipment. Having new equipment will change your mindset. It will change your business, I'm telling you. And if you want new equipment, ah, uh -huh, uh -huh, look at the segue, look at the segue. <gasps> Give me a call. Uh, again, my name is Jersey from windowcleaner.com. I'm on live chat, so yeah, a lot of you are like, ah, oh, I watch it to tell me. If you ever, ever see me out, if you ever uh, see me on chat or on Facebook or anything, Tell me you watch and you love it. I just, it's so awesome when people do. So definitely, definitely do that. But this week, our code is going to be for 5% off. All you need to do is call me, text me, whatever. Let me know that you're looking to get something ordered. And the code this week is mistake. That's the code this week. If you tell me the word mistake, you're going to get 5% off your order if you order through me. So definitely, definitely do that. Shop. Shop all night at windowcleaner.com, put it all in your cart, and then tonight or tomorrow or whatever, just text me on that number, 862-312-2026. Be like, yo, it's in my cart, put it in. Awesome, virtual high five, and go do your due diligence and review this show, I'm telling you. That is absolutely amazing. If you could just do me that favor and review the show anywhere podcasts are available, just review it. Be like, yo, five stars, he's super cool. You don't have to lie. You know, say it's super cool. Just cool. Stuff. No, but do definitely, uh, definitely review the show. It helps us out. Share this content. Please share it. I would very, very much appreciate it. And either way, listen, take notes. If you ever get anything out of this stuff, uh, I hope it helps everything. Buy your supplies for me. But most importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic.